In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void and without form, and darkness was upon the depth. And God said these words. These powerful words that changed everything forever. God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God divided the light from the darkness. And that's what he's doing today. He wants you to know that he loves you this morning. And he wants to divide the light from the darkness that's in your life. That you can be a people that will flourish for him. That you can be a people that thrive for him in the light, being in the light no longer walking in darkness. Father, we love you this morning. We glorify you. We praise you, Jesus, for your love and mercy, your goodness to us, God. You're so amazing, Lord. We praise you, Father, for speaking light with your rhema word into existence. God, we thank you for speaking light into existence that we could experience that light. Not only with our sight, God, but that light that shines within us. That light that shines from Jesus that lives inside of us. We praise you, Lord. We glorify you. We magnify you in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys good this morning? I want you guys to know this morning that heaven is real. Heaven is real. But I also want you to know that hell is real. It's a place that people by their choice go. But I want you to know that God, it's God's will that all of us make heaven our home. It's his will that none of us perish. But he will not put his will upon you. He has given you your own will to make your own choices to do what you want to do. It's up to you. It's up to you to decide what you want to do, how you want to live eternity. If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 1. I love the book of John. If you haven't read it, read it and then read it again and then read it again. And then keep reading it. If that's the only book you ever read, read it, read it, read it. My dad, my real dad, Carl Michael Abney, is passed, but I didn't get to know him very well. But he could not read. I know this. He could not read. And I remember he said that he picked up his Bible one day, and he was so mad because he couldn't read. He didn't finish school. He was a logger. He worked with wood. That's where all these bowls come from in here. He was a woodworker. But he couldn't read. And he picked his Bible up and he said, God, how how am I going to understand you if I can't understand this? If I don't know how to understand this? And he took his Bible and he threw it clear across the room. And when he picked it back up, he could read it. The only book that he could read was John. He never read a book in his life, but John was the book that he read. His favorite verse I found out during the funeral, when I did the funeral, when I found out that his favorite verse was John 14, 6, and that's my favorite verse. I didn't know it till that day. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man can come to the Father but through me. That is the word of God. And here in John it says this, and I love this. It says, in the beginning, so we got the beginning In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was void without form, and darkness was in the Spirit of God hovered over the darkness. And this says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him 
was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. See, Jesus shines through you. When we talked about darkness coming into this place, darkness will walk in through these doors. There will be a group of people that have never met Jesus ever in their life. And they want to walk in and they want to see what this is. They want to see who this Jesus is. And we have to be the ones that shine that light because he lives inside of us. John the Baptist, when he talked about the light, he said, I come and I, I represent the light or I come before the light. John said, I am not the light, but I come to testify of the light. But after Jesus died and rose again and went to heaven, he now lives inside of us. He lives inside of us. Think of that, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that spoke light into existence lives inside of you. And that light that's in you should shine out bright so people can see, so people can want that light. Not that they see you as the light, but they see the light that shines through you. In verse 12, it says, And as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believed on his name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for that this morning. Thank you, God, for your goodness and mercy upon us this morning. So light is very important to have in your life. Light is greater than any darkness you'll ever experience. The dark things that come in your life, the dark things that you bring in your life, the dark things that come in before you, light is greater than any of the darkness you just saw. It was dark, and the light came on. When the light is in the room, darkness cannot even be there. It can hide in the shadows, but it cannot be the main thing in the room. Light is the main thing, always. Light will always triumph over darkness, always. So I want you to know in your life that when you struggle, when you have these battles in your life, when you have these, these things that you go through in life, some things you've brought there on your own is something the world has just put in you or put in front of you, some things other people have put upon you, some things people have done to you, dark things. But I want you to know that the light will overcome those things. Light will overcome every single situation that you're going through right now. So I ask you this morning, do you have the light of God inside of you? Because if you don't, some of the things that you're dealing with, you're going to continue to deal with. Those dark matters you're going to continue to deal with because the light is not in you. You must understand that when you read the Word of God, listen, this right here is God himself in written form. This must be so precious to you. This must be something that you take in day in and day out as you feed yourself more than food. You should eat this right here. You should take this and ingest this and let this change you. Let this change you to who he's called you to be. You think some of your problems are bad for you, or they're, or they're going to break you, or they're going to tear you down. I'm telling you right now, your problems are going to mold you and make you into what he's called you to be. You might be going through battles right now, but listen, it ain't over. You might be going through battles right now, but it ain't over. Because why? Because God is going to be the overcomer. The light that God shines through you is going to overcome every situation in your life if you will let him. If you will let the light shine upon every one of those spots in your life that seem dark, watch how the light changes that. Watch how the light changes those dark moments. Watch how God moves in. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalms 92, verse 12. Psalms 92. And I love this. I'm reading out of King James this morning. 
Psalms 92 says this. When you're going through, listen, when you're going through those trials and you got those problems, those struggles, those battles in your life, listen. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. God is comparing you to a palm tree. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Do you know why? Unlike my friend David that just bought a house and, and every sycamore tree on his house is falling down. Um, <laughs> But I want you to know, David, God has a word for you this morning. But listen, he says that, that the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. You ever been to Florida and you ever watched the palm trees? You ever been there during a hurricane and watched how the palm trees bend and they bend and they bend, but they don't break? Why? It's because the palm tree says, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to quit being what I am. I'm not going to be able to quit being what God's called me to be. And every time a storm comes, every time a trial comes, every time a problem comes in your life, watch how the palm tree, when a storm comes, the roots get stronger and they go deeper and they grab a hold tighter to the ground. They said, no, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to let go. I'm going to keep going. No matter what comes my way, no matter what problem or struggle or battle comes my way, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep pushing through. And the palm trees are standing when the storm comes through. When the, when the hurricane comes through, the 170 mile an hour winds are blowing that thing till it's almost touching the ground. It stands right back up. Why? Because it digs deep and keeps digging deep deep into the ground, grabbing a hold of the ground so it don't tumble over. And that's what God wants for you in your life. And David, I want you to know this morning, as I was praying for you this morning, the trials that you're going through, I'm going to give a backstory. David's bought this house. Um, they moved to New Orleans. They bought this house here, and uh, it's been one thing after another, one thing after another. If a house could be a lemon, this might be a lemon. One thing after another. Trees are falling right and left. I mean, he's going to have a lot of firewood. Beautiful place to be, but trees are falling right and left. And I want you to know, David, just remind you that you are like the palm trees. You keep pressing in. You keep pressing through because God is bringing victory through every battle, everything that you're facing. And I want you to know, David, that how, and I want all of you to know how you respond, how you respond to the life's trials that you go through. The onlookers around you, some are going to determine their life according to how you respond to the trials that you go through. Some of them are going to determine how they serve Jesus by watching you go through a trial and how you interpret that trial and how you handle those situations. So David, you have onlookers. And I know it's a struggle and I know it's a battle with every tree falling all around you. But stand strong like the palm tree because that's what you are. That's what God sees you as, a palm tree. Keep it up. Keep strong, David. Bless you. How many of you have problems in your life right now? Big problems. How many of you got little problems, like little things? Anybody got little problems? God cares about the big problems in our life. Tonight, he's going to deal with some big problems in the water. He's going to deal with some major big problems in the water that we see as big. But God deals with the little problems as well. I mean, the smallest of little problems as well, God wants to deal with those. We often, we often, we take God and we say, you know what? I've got this big thing I'm dealing with. But the little things, we don't even give to him. We think we can handle those on our own. You know, God wants us to give him every single problem. Every single problem that you have, he wants you to give to him. In 2 Kings chapter 6, there's a story in there of some sons of prophets. And they were in the land with Elijah. And in the, in the, in the, they were all getting, the, the where they were dwelling at, there was just a, a, a massive amount of people. And they're starting to rub elbows. They're starting to get uncomfortable. And he's like, he's like, they're like, can we, hey, can we go to this other place? And can we start cutting some trees down in this other place? Elijah's like, yeah. And they said, hey, will you come with us? They said, yeah. So they're over by a river and they're cutting these trees down. And this is in 2 Kings chapter 6. And they're cutting these trees down. And they're chopping these trees, and all of a sudden, um, while they're chopping the tree and it's getting ready to fall, one of them slung his axe, and the axe head fell off and went into the river, went to the bottom. 
If you've ever been in a muddy river, you're not going to find an accident in the bottom of a muddy river. So what do you do? He said, Elijah, listen. He said, Elijah, I borrowed that thing, man. I borrowed that. I need that back. I got to give that back to its owner. I borrowed that axe head. So our God is so powerful. He said, let there be light, and there was light. Jesus came into the world to be a light inside of our life. Elijah cut off a little stick or twig off the tree and threw it in the water where he said it went, and the axe head floated to the top. And he said, he said, grab it. And I want you to know, when you have a trial in your life and something happens and you don't know what's going on, you don't know where it's at, I want you just to throw that stick in and I want you to watch it float to the top and I want you to just grab a hold of the victory that God has for you. Because there's victory in every trial that you go through. There's victory in every battle that you go through. In every battle you go through, there is a stronger root. There's a stronger you in every battle that you go through. I could tell you story after story of things that I've been through in my life. Intimate stories of things that have been done to me in my life. But I count every one of them as victory today because I have a testimony of who I am. I have a testimony of overcoming those things and stepping into my true identity. I am in the prime of my life right now. I feel like I'm in the prime of my life. I'm, I'm in some place I've never been ever before in my life. I'm, I'm where right dead center of where God wants me to be. And that's an awesome feeling to know that you're dead center of where God wants you to be. Some of you guys are to the right and to the left, and you're looking for that center. I encourage you this morning to seek God through his word. Seek him through his word. Seek him through prayer. And watch how he changes your life. Watch how he changes the things in your life and makes them great. And victory is going to be yours. You might seem like you're small. You might seem like, I can't do much. And sometimes one person can't do much, but a group of people can do a lot. And I want you to know this morning, even with the water immersion tonight, a group of people can come and just support what God is doing and watch what God is doing in the water tonight. You know, one sand in the sea can't stop the ocean. But the sands of the sea can stop the ocean from coming too far. Sand is actually what holds the ocean at bay. Can you imagine the sand talking to the ocean and the ocean saying to the sand, listen, I'm getting ready to come over top of you. I'm getting ready to take you out. And the sand is going to say, you might come over me, but you always have to go back to your place. You always have to go back to your place. So when the enemy tries to tell you that, that he's going to override you, you just tell him, no, I'm going to put you back in your place because that's where God said you have to be. Darkness is overcome by light. Your problems will be overcome by you living for God, you serving God. It says in Psalms 91, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Listen, when you abide in that secret place of God, when you abide in that secret place of God, you're under the wings of the Father, and He's protecting you. He's watching you. He's watching over you. He's caring for you. Last night, I went to Bloomington about 9 o'clock at night. Some friends of mine went earlier, and we got some photographs. I did some under, we did some undercover work for legislative people that wanted us to go and get some photographs of some things that were going on in, in Bloomington last night. I was sick to my stomach. I about threw up two times. When I saw these children that were pole dancing, if you don't know what that is, look it up. Children dancing provocative. Men dressed as women dancing provocative in front of the children. I watched that and it made me so sick. And I wasn't mad because what I saw was a bunch of people that didn't know who they are. 
They didn't know who they are. They didn't know their identity. Does God love them? Yes. Does he agree with them? No. Should we love them? Yes. Should we agree? No. We cannot agree with anything that's not of heaven. We cannot line up with anything that's not in heaven and of heaven. We can't. I was so sick, though. I called my wife, and I said, I just can't stay any longer. I said, I, I, the grand finale was coming up, and I'm like, I just I can't, I can't do it. And I'm like, my head, I mean, I, it took me forever to get to sleep because my head was pounding so bad. And to top it off, it took place right in front of the church that was promoting it. And it broke my heart to see where we are today. Where some have fallen away because they're not in the Word of God, because the darkness has overcome them, because they have not devoted themselves to the Word of God. I will not become a person that sits in darkness. Light is my life. Living the life of love is my life. The Bible says not one sin is greater than another. That's true. To us as humans, some things are more appalling than others, but to God, that's all the same. If there's any sin in your life, any sin at all, any sin, it's appalling to God. And He wants it. He wants the sin that's in your life. He wants all the things that are in your life that's not of Him. He wants every single thing, your thoughts, your words, your actions. Let Him have them. Let Him have them today. I'm going to let you guys out early today because I want you to go home and get a nap and get rested up to come back for the water immersion tonight. You have no excuse. I'm going to give you plenty of time to get a good nap. If you want to support what God's doing, this is how you do it. Power in numbers. There are power in numbers. There's power in numbers. Chris is going to come back tonight. He's going to worship for us tonight. Hopefully we have it on a everything organized a little better and get some volume on you, but... But we'll get it right tonight, Chris. You did such a great job. Let's stand. Light. I speak light into you this morning. I speak life into you this morning. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the life. And he wants all of us to live a life of love for when the darkness comes through the door. We as a people, and Jesus is shining through us, will light their world. We're conduits that God uses to light the world of people around us. And what made me sad last night is that I couldn't, I couldn't, change things in that moment. I wanted to pray with people so bad, but it, this, it, it was gross darkness. I didn't even know how. I didn't even know where to begin. I've never been in that position before. So what that's going to do is make me dig deeper. Make me go deeper because I don't ever want to be in that position again where I cannot minister to somebody. I prayed for him. I prayed in the spirit all the way through as I was walking through getting video. And, and I didn't say one word to one person. And you guys know me. I, I mean, there's... I don't mean a stranger. I mean, I could talk to anybody about anything, but this just, it was so horrific. If 
you don't know, I'm talking about the Gay Pride Fest. The church in this town sponsored it as well. God help them. So right now, if there's anybody that don't know Jesus, I encourage you to come forward and we're going to pray with you. If you've got sin in your life, you need to leave here. Come and bring it and leave it here. Because God wants it. There's no condemnation. That's not from heaven. There's no guilt. That's not from heaven. Just give it up and let him have it. As I said last week, if you're, if you're addicted to pornography or drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, being mad all the time, being mean all the time, saying the wrong thing all the time, just give it to God. Let Him have it. He wants it. He wants you to be free. When Jesus said, let there be light, He was saying, let them be free. Yeah. Father, we just love You right now. We glorify You. We thank You, Jesus, for who You are, for who we are in You. God, we thank You for that place in Your heart that You've created for every one of us, Lord. Father, we speak light over your people this morning. We speak love over them this morning, God, that you would move in their hearts, move in ways that, God, they've never seen before. Let today be a turning point in their lives, Lord, to turn to you and draw nigh to you while you're able to draw nigh to, Lord. There's coming a day. We're getting close. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you guys tonight.